out with a good rule. And you can have like great cross commercial. He has to have. So this is in between the proposed seawall they're proposing and the building coming down. What's going to protect the neighborhood from flooding, not necessarily during a storm, but just with a spring tide and some wind coming out of the south. So I'll fight. Go on. Are you talking during construction or all the time? Uh, uh, there's, there's sure. got, I have two separate. When you, take the, well, when you take the building down, what are you going to put in its place to stop the water? When the building comes down, um, before any other construction occurs, before the seawall is constructed, before any sidewalks are constructed, or anything else, the buildings are going to be down. You intend to draw a series of sheet piles. And what sheet piles are, and you see them all around the park, um, they're corrugated pieces of steel. And you drive them down into the ground and they stick up vertically. We're going to drive those down, we're going to cut the tops off about uh, probably about six or seven feet higher than the floor of the building today. We're doing that for two reasons. One, we're doing that for the flooding concerns like you mentioned. And second, we're also doing that for the safety of the people who are going to be working on the site. Without the building there, as you mentioned, the waves can come up uncontrolled into that area. So we're going to have that. There, there's a, a wave height elevation that, that FEMA publishes. It's elevation 12. We're going to have the top of that sheet pile wall right around elevation 15. So that will be a little bit higher than, than that, that FEMA wave. From there, behind that, on the commercial street side of that sheet pile wall, we'll be able to do the construction of the sea wall, the sidewalks, the site improvements, the parking garage, the building, and on and on, while that sea wall, while that, that, uh, that structure is in place. Once the sea wall has been constructed, that's what would protect the, uh, the site and the businesses out on commercial street. But the sheet piles will be there after the building comes down before the sea wall is built. Um, yeah. Why yes, ma'am, you're right. This is the other question. I have a question, but before I ask it, may I just have a question with the words of Mr. Cunningham about his answer to Ann Lloyd's? Ah, uh, question. Okay. So if you want to take that and put a question mark in there. And wrap it yes, into a whole big question. Yes. I'll see what I can do. Um, <coughs> Mr. Cunningham, I thank you for being honest about not being able to assure us that there won't be complaints about the noise and the smell. I appreciate your honesty about that because we do, in fact, work and live in an industrial zone for marine fisheries. And let me tell you, it stinks. And your question My is? My question is, given that the hotel is unwelcome by the businesses and the neighbors and that the current plan built up so high that it's going to block not only our views, but also the views from the inner harbor, entering in from the outer harbor and downtown. And you have a pretty big footprint to work with, and it's common practice for developers to save some of the footprint so that they can have future plans and projects. What future plans do you envision there? Because you're taking up an awful lot of sky space and changing the whole vista of downtown and the port from all angles. Thank you. Did you get that, John? The future plans for. Well, that was a long question. I'm a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe okay. long I don't want a really long answer because there's other people with questions. All right. To the point, John. The point is that the part of this design was so that the building didn't take up this whole lot and interfere with the view from street level out towards Gloucester Harbor. That area is dedicated to the parking and the access for, for entering and leaving the site. And the way the special permit process works, we're committing that entire parcel to that plan. So there are no plans to add on or use that area for an additional hotel, if that's your question. It is indeed. Well, then the answer to that is there are no plans. Is okay. it Thank you. That was no, no plan. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, the ways to tell us all of them. How do you uh, propose the traffic in the respect of you're adding possibly 100 cars more? Maybe not for a day, but they're going to be coming or going all day long as guests of the hotel. 
mixed with a small road and the trailer trucks. When I was a kid, there was hardly any traffic because there weren't as many cars, but there were lots of trailer trucks. And I don't think that's really changed out there. There's still an industry down there. And I'm not old enough. The three kids got hit by trailer trucks and died. So my question is so much that coming along that route, whether the trailer trucks are going in or whether the trailer trucks are coming out, Unless all business stops down there, they're always going to be there, and they're going to still try to have a hundred more vehicles. Traffic to me sounds like you can manipulate anything you want on paper, but it's a tough spot. They have the little narrow streets. You can't move those properties back that are on the other side of this. So if I don't understand how you propose a hundred more cars down in that area without traffic coming in, traffic going out manipulating this. And I know they don't all show up at the same time, but there's still a hundred rooms. And part of that also is that I've seen some of the plans of coming up from Roger Street, um, and there's some things on your plans that have totally changed the structure of going from Angle Street down, cutting out up to Main Street. <coughs> part of this, who pays for all of that and that's something that needs to be done and we couldn't even get the traffic changed in the other direction, and yet you guys are supposed to hold it change down there. It's amazing. All right, we have that. Thank you. Um, traffic. Uh, John? Let me just say a couple of things. Two parties here. First of all, that was about as long as the third. Uh, the, the that was traffic. a question. That was a question. Go ahead. Uh, I'll let Vanilla deal with the traffic, because we've hired a traffic consultant data study and presented information. But I want, I want everyone to understand that the city has hired a third party reviewer with expertise in traffic that will review that study as well. The planning board has expertise in this and it's all going to be subject to review. Before I just say, the one other thing is, is that the current plans call for being able to widen commercial street in front of the hotel. We're setting the hotel back 10 feet from the sideline, and we're taking the sidewalk and putting it on our property rather than the street. You know, uh, I, I think you could briefly touch upon the issue of when these cars come in and leave. It's not just a matter of how many cars are on the street on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or on a month or a year. It's what happens every hour of the day, which is really what people see. Going to work in the morning, or coming back in the afternoon, or you're heading out for grocery shopping on the weekend. There are certain times of the day during weekdays and weekends when you actually feel the effect of the traffic the most. I mean, there is traffic obviously 24 hours of the day, but it does peak during certain times of the day. And there are specific guidelines for the state and national level guidelines that require us to look at when those peaks happen in traffic flow be it on Commercial Street or Rogers or Washington, and superimpose the site traffic, the traffic associated with, the, with this project on top of that, not just in, in terms of the number of cars, but also the time of day. So when you look at some of the charts that are in the study and that I presented before to, to the city if you're in public meetings, you do see that offset. Peak of traffic on Commercial Street does not happen at the same time as the peak of traffic for the hotel. Hotel traffic happens, you know, usually the peak happens much later in the 6, 7 p.m. Uh, as opposed to commercial street traffic that happens more during the day, during the middle of the day. I mean, you do have trucks that start early in the morning, 4 or 5 in the morning, and there's hardly any activity at the hotel. And then the, the traffic on commercial street peaks during the course of the day, and then kind of winds down as the businesses close in and the residents are back in their houses. But then that's when the, the hotel traffic comes in. So there is an offset. The, the time of day when the hotel traffic comes in and leaves uh, during the peak operations are different from when commercial street traffic leaves. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. my question is, is who is going to absorb the cost of the construction of these tra proposed traffic changes? Is Fulcourt going to absorb these costs, or is it going to be put on the city side? And who will be responsible for the maintenance? Thank you. Costs on yep. city street construction, and then maintenance. So two parts to that question, in terms of cost. The first point I think that should be made is that the study that's been 
done, and these are suggestions or recommendations. I mean, this is the city streets, and the city's got to decide what they think is appropriate. And the answer to who's going to pay is the, the developer, Beauport's going to pay for those improvements. And once they're done, I mean, there's signs and striping, I think the maintenance of them falls within the purview of the city, but I don't think it's a, a huge no, I think you answered exactly what I... Well, what will pay, city will make pay. Uh, so, uh, yes. Yep. Yep. What side is your loading dock going to be on? Loading dock. Which side is the loading dock going to be on? So let's say we're Commercial Street facing Pavilion Beach. Where? Which side would it be on? So the loading dock is off Commercial Street, and it's um, <coughs> roughly adjacent to the Mortallaros building. So, to, to, to the small to the small building. So it's, it's, it's not going to be on Port Square, right? No man. No man. No, but it will, will be facing Port Square. No man, it doesn't face Port Square. It's entirely on Commercial Street, and it faces. Uh, well, Felicia Oil. Okay. Across the street is Felicia. Okay. Um, I wanted to touch on, I'm oh, sorry, Denise Foley. I wanted to ask about um, traffic again. Um, what time is your check-in time going to be? Only because I've worked in hotels my whole life, and check-in is usually around 3. And the guests, we can't help it, but they come at noontime looking to check-in. So I kind of think that statement is false, and I want to know if your check-in time is going to be later because of the businesses that are down there. So the question on the check-in time 